Okay, hello to you all again. Uh, this is round two. The, there was an inter internet interruption there, so I'm trying a different signal. So hello to everybody. And I will just run through again what, uh, what I was saying earlier so that we have one complete video. And if this doesn't work, then I will do um, a private video recording and upload it to Facebook and YouTube. Okay, so if we get chopped off again, uh, just know that I'll do a separate private video and upload that way so that we make sure we get one video with the exercises in it. So just to go over rather quickly now um, the information I was sharing before the signal went. The purpose of this video is to give two exercises. One is to help people get to sleep at night. So that moment when you're trying to get to sleep and you just can't. Um, we'll do an exercise there that you can you can do along with me. Okay, we're not going to fall asleep, but at least you'll get an idea of what the exercise is if you do it with me on the live. And then before you go to bed at night, you can just replay this video um, just to refresh your mind as to what you'll be doing when you go to bed. Um, and then the second part of this live will be to just give you another exercise that will help people that have repeat and recurring nightmares. So the repeat kind that happen again and again. Okay, um, so the way I'm going to speak in this live is in a way that I hope will help anybody around the world that is having difficulty sleeping or with repeat nightmares. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference in, in how I'll be speaking. I'll be making sure that the terminology I use is, is understandable, uh, no matter anybody's background, no matter whether they are young or elderly, no matter their culture, these are just two simple exercises to keep an open mind to and to try out, just to try, see if it helps. Okay, and if it does, if this does help you, then please share it to your friends and your family, your loved ones, you know, so many people are finding it hard to get to sleep and there's something so easy that, that can really, really help. So just share away. It will be on YouTube as well, if people aren't on Facebook. So to begin, exercise one, how to get to sleep really quickly within about 10 minutes. Just to start and begin with, I want to draw your attention just a couple of things. One is that when the sun sets at night, when the sun goes down, our human bodies start to produce a chemical in the brain from the pineal gland called melatonin and that chemical is designed to relax the body down in order for you to go to sleep and that chemical gets produced as soon as the sun starts to go down and then it increases and increases and increases and it carries on being produced throughout the night. So there is a natural process for our sleeping. But in this day and age, uh, the artificial stimulus in everyday life um, can really interrupt the ability to get to sleep more easily. So to just point you to a few of those things that you could adjust if they resonate, if it resonates to you, to just be mindful of them and just adjust them to help your body fall into a more restful place before sleep each night. One of them is artificial light. So you could just change the light bulbs in your room, put them to a lower watt so that your eyes adjust to a lower light so that the eyes aren't as stimulated by artificial light. So 
so just more of an ambiance more like the sun when it sets outside and everything goes dusk the birds never have a problem sleeping so uh, the other things is is to bear in mind what forms of media um, you might be paying attention to late at night so say it's a film say it's uh, you're on the internet um, maybe you're having a chat a social media chat with a friend late at night um, maybe you play video games so to not not stop that but just to be mindful of what you do that really stimulates the mind before you go to bed in other words you could watch a film that is more peaceful that doesn't require the brain to use as much thinking you could chat to a friend where you're not in a big debate late at night that requires a lot of brain stimulation but just a very gentle graceful chat with your friend um, so in other words be mindful of not stimulating your brain to such a degree that the brain is extremely active just before you go to bed but to tone it down tone your brain down allow your brain to relax a little bit more before you go to bed okay so i'm just going to have a little drink and then we're going to do the exercise so all you have to do is close your eyes with me okay you're not going to fall asleep hopefully uh it's the only reason I'm asking you to close your eyes is so that as I'm talking to you, you can see with your eyes closed what's happening. So you'll experience what I'm going to talk about. And you do need to have your eyes closed in order to kind of get what I'm saying and what I'm pointing to. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to shut our eyes in a moment. I might not because I've got a few notes here just to make sure I cover everything. Um, but just, just to close your eyes shortly and then I'll, I'll tell you when to open them again. But it's just so that you can have the experience of exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. This exercise... Even if you're doing it in the daytime with me, it's the daytime here. To practice the exercise at night again, come back to the video at night again. Because in the nighttime, when you shut your eyes, with your eyes closed, it's going to be darker. And it's easier to understand this when it's dark, okay? Uh, nighttime, sleep time, generally, it's dark, isn't it? So that's when you're going to be doing the exercise once you understand it you'll be going to bed tonight and then you'll do the exercise when you lie down and are about to go to sleep so of course it's going to be darker then and it's it's much easier to understand in the dark <laughs> okay so if you close your eyes with me now And imagine that you are in bed, about to sleep. Something to do every night as part of this exercise. The first thing to do is to set an intention and do this in your own way, in your own words. I'm going to share how I would do it, but please, please find your own words. Find the way that the words that are natural to you, to nat natural to your personality. So, you're lying down in bed, wanting to go to sleep. The first thing to do, as you're breathing gently, is to set an intention, but use yours. I will share something along the lines of what I say. And I never say the same thing, it just depends what mood I'm in. But I tell myself that now is not the time to carry on thinking. 
I tell myself that anything, anything at all that I need to think about, I can leave until tomorrow. Now is not the time for my brain to be thinking about anything that's happened in the daytime or anything that's happened or will happen the next day. It's not the time to plan anything. Now is the time for me to give to my body to sleep. This is the time I give to my own body to sleep. So to find your own words. But say something that is meaningful to you. So that you are telling yourself that this time, these eight hours, seven hours, six hours sleep are not going to now be the time where you do all your thinking. You can do that tomorrow. It's actually the time to rest your body and give that rest to yourself. So if you come up with your own words for that, that suit you and feel right for you, and you say those when you get into bed. You're really reiterating to yourself what this moment is about. You're reconditioning your mind. You're creating this focus that this time is about you sleeping. It's not about going to bed to think. Okay. So... Go into that habit every night. Because what society does tend to do, depending on your lifestyle, maybe you're busy with work, maybe you're busy with your family, but the fast pace of today's life is such that sometimes people find that sleep time when they get into bed to be the only time they get a bit of peace and quiet. And that's where they do their thinking in bed when it's time to sleep so to reprogram your mind into knowing in total peace that whatever you need to think about whatever's going on in your mind you can leave it until tomorrow and then you can give it all of your attention that this time is a time to give to your physical body so that you can sleep so that you can greet the day the next day with so much more energy because you've slept so it's the best time to then think tomorrow is the best time to think okay so that's the first thing have your own way of setting an intention and say it every night when you fall into bed. Reprogram your mind. Now we're going to do the exercise. Okay. So. With your eyes closed. You need your eyes closed for this part, otherwise you're not going to understand what I'm saying. And I'm closing my eyes so that I can see and tell you this, this experience through the doing of it. If you close your eyes right now and look at the backs of your eyelids okay so allow your eye to simply focus on the back of your eyelid that is now closed you're just looking at the inside of your eyelid and what you can notice 
and I'm going to pause so that you can have your own experience of what I'm saying. But what you will notice is that the lens that we call the cornea, or cornea, depending on where you are in the world, goes to you, which is your eyelids, the backs of your eyelid. And when we go to bed at night, what we tend to do, because of the stimulus of the mind, Instead of looking at our eyelids, it's almost like our eyes reverse. <coughs> Excuse me. It's almost like our eyes are looking into the brain, into the mind, because we're doing so much thinking. So just notice, I'm going to go quiet and just notice, it's so acutely focused on the thought that is in your brain. Okay, I'll go quiet now. Okay, so now let's go back to allowing the eye to look at the back of your eyelid. And we're noticing that the lens, the cornea, is contracted, tight, feels tight. Because we're looking at something very close up. Now, instead of thinking that you're looking at your eyelids, imagine that what you're seeing is infinite space. So instead of the skin at the back of the eyelids, that skin is now a vast space. It's infinite. It's bigger than the whole of this universe. You're no longer looking at the eyelid. You're looking at a vast, massive, infinite space. So instead of looking near, you're looking far. And as a result, your eye, the lens in your eye, relaxes as it would normally if you looked at a distant landscape with your eyes open, your lens would relax. So now viewing just this infinite space, I want to ask you to just look at it. Just look. You're not looking for anything. You're not looking for images. You're just allowing your eyes to just look into the distance of this vast space. And now notice any thoughts that arise within your mind. It's okay. It's okay to do this and then those thoughts creep in. But just notice the thoughts creep in 
and then return to just looking at this vast space. It's so vast. You can't measure it. You don't need to define it or think about it. It's just there. So every time a thought comes in, maybe about your family or the day, your partner, tomorrow, that's okay. But just notice the thought comes in and then return to the vast space you can see. So you let the thought go and return to the exercise. And if you do that each time a thought arises, you let the thought go, return to the exercise of just looking. You're not trying to work out anything in this space. You're just observing it. And your lens of your eye is relaxed. And if you keep doing that, you'll fall asleep. Why? Because you're not thinking. You're just looking. You're just looking. So that's the exercise. You're stilling the mind. There's nothing to think about in that exercise. Okay. That's it. And uh, to start with, when you first do that exercise, it's like riding a bike. You're focusing on what the exercise is to start with. Okay. But then the next night, you've kind of got a grip of what the exercise is. And then the next night, you feel more relaxed because you know what you're doing. And then the next night, you're just doing it. So it's like riding a bike. You have to practice it just for a few nights until your brain relaxes to the exercise because the... Um, natural ability to do that kicks in so you don't have to then think about the exercise it's like when you learn anything new to start with you have to think about it but as soon as you know how to do it you can do it without any effort without using the mind so to start with you're going to be using the mind to focus on the exercise but once you've grasped it once you can see in a distance you'll just do it naturally and then you go to bed you set your intention you tell yourself you remind yourself that this is your sleep time and that anything that is on your mind you can leave till the next day and you can think about it then when you're wide awake and you've had a beautiful night's sleep make sure you do that part and then close your eyes. Look at the backs of your eyelids. So I had my eyes shut when I did that, obviously. But what I'm trying to say, just in case there's any confusion, when we have our eyes shut and we're looking at the backs of our eyelids, it's like if this is the eyelid, it's like there, isn't it? And so the, the lens contracts. It has to work. And we don't want it to. We want the lens of our eye to relax. So, 
instead of seeing near, which contracts the end, the lens, we change that eyelid scene to the vast space, because it does look like vast space. It does. If you change your perception, it looks like vast space. So then this eyelid that was seemingly here becomes this vast space that is infinite. It's just changing your perception. And then your eyelid, your eye, your lens relaxes, which is what it needs to do to sleep. Your eyes need to relax. They don't need to be contracted. And they certainly don't need to be focusing on the thoughts in the head, which is kind of like looking backwards. As soon as we shut our eyes, everything becomes more cute. Our thoughts become more focused. So it's almost like the eyes are looking into the back of the head, really focusing on the thoughts. We don't want that either. We just want these eyes to relax. Okay, so that is... Uh, the sleep exercise and if you practice that you'll be asleep in 10 minutes just with practice it will be so easy to do and then it becomes the way you sleep and you just go to bed and you're asleep within 10 minutes most nights most nights there may be an exception but most nights yeah absolutely becomes the way you sleep peacefully so now I'm going to move on to um, the second part, which is about repeat nightmares. So I'm not going to speak about nightmares in general, because that's a massive subject. I'm talking about the ones that people have that they repeat and repeat and repeat throughout their lives and years. If you have a recurring nightmare, to have an open mind about what I'm about to say. That recurring nightmare is actually you showing you, guiding you that there is a fear, there is an underlying fear in your human being that isn't being seen. Any repeat, recurring nightmare is you trying to show you that in your waking state, in your daytime state, there is some sort of deep fear that isn't being seen. So to explain about dreams a tiny bit, because it is a vast subject and we're not going to go into that today. When we go to sleep at night, we change consciousness states. We go from this waking active state of a certain type of consciousness. And when we fall asleep, we go into a different type of consciousness state. Now the way the brain is able to interpret dreams is based on its ability to interpret wavelengths, which is energy. Everybody's different. But this is why we can have dreams and they don't seem to make sense. They seem a bit weird, crazy, odd. It's because the brain, the processor, isn't able to interpret correctly the wavelengths of energy that is being given whilst we sleep. The brain is just not able to interpret them properly. And so we have these dreams that just seem weird, odd, crazy. And sometimes we have nightmares. And sometimes we have repeated nightmares that are the same theme again and again and again. So, to really zoom in on the repeat 
nightmares. There's two things you can do to stop the nightmare, in my experience. One is to be aware of the nightmare itself, acknowledge it, and in your waking daytime state, try and work out what the fear is. Try and work out what is the underlying fear that you feel in the nightmare. So it doesn't really matter what the story is in the nightmare. It does, but it doesn't really for this point. It's about how you feel in the nightmare. And that's what's going to guide you to this unconscious fear that you're holding on to in your everyday life. So one way of stopping the nightmare would be if you have the ability or you have the tools to look into what is this underlying fear that I just don't know about, I'm not aware of, but it's definitely there because that's why you're receiving the nightmare, the repeat one. There's lots of different ways all around the world that you can look at your underlying fears that you may not know are running within you. So just do the way that suits you best, that feels right for you. But to spend daytime, in your daytime, looking at the feeling of the nightmare, how did it feel? What did it create in you in terms of your feelings? And try and find the cause of the fear within you. If you can address this underlying fear that is present in your human being in your daytime, everyday life, the nightmare will stop. But let's say you can't do that. Let's say you just can't get to the bottom of it. There's a second way you can stop the recurring nightmare. And that's really where I want to go with this exercise, okay? Before you go to sleep at night, to tell yourself in your own words, not my words, your words, the ones that feel natural to you, your personality. Set the intention to say no to the nightmare. In other words, if I say it my way, if I had a recurring nightmare and I was lying in bed, I'd say something along the lines of, if I have this nightmare tonight, I'm going to say no. So to just do it your way, but to actually give attention to that nightmare, set your... Okay, we're still here. Okay, I'm now actually holding the phone so that we, uh, we carry on with this. Um, I'm just going to hold the phone so that we don't lose the signal. But before you go to bed at night, you need to set your own intention that if this nightmare comes up at night, you're going to say no to it. In other words, you're going to face it when you're sleeping. Now, the reason you need to go here in your mind before you sleep is you do need to set that intention. So even in the daytime, you could give attention to that nightmare again. You could recall it and in the daytime say, okay, if I have that nightmare again tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to stand up to it. I'm going to say no to it in the dream itself. 
So again, you're setting these conditions that are going to get met if you put your focus to it. They are. But you have to give it the attention. It's not to just think, oh, I had that nightmare. It was horrible. I want to forget about it. No, it needs your attention. You need to stand up to it. You need to face it without the fear. So the nightmare is showing you the fear, but you need to stand up to it with no fear. And when you do that, the repeat nightmare will stop. So again, just to reiterate, the several ways you can stand up to it. In the daytime, give it some thought and tell yourself with absolute certainty you have to plant the seed, you have to adjust the programming in the mind that if that nightmare occurs again in the dream itself you're going to stand up to it and you're going to say no and you can say no in whatever way is natural to you okay it might be no with a few words it might be no with a few swear words whatever is natural to you but you have to set your intention of what you want. You have to face your fear and say no to it. And then you can do this just before you sleep at night. So you're lying in bed and you can give it a little bit, and I emphasize a little bit of attention there, and say to yourself in your own words, if I get that nightmare again tonight, I'm going to say no to it. I'm going to stand up to it in the dream itself. And then just let it go. So it's all about balance. In other words, you absolutely need to make a decision about this nightmare. That you're going to stand up to it and face the fear. But not to overwhelm yourself with countless thoughts about your nightmare. Because look at that in itself. If you're repeatedly, repeatedly thinking about anything, then that's what you're going to create. So if you repeatedly think about your nightmare and it causes you worry and anxiety and more fear and worry about going to sleep at night even then guess what's going to happen? You're going to have your nightmares because you're creating them. So find the balance, <coughs> excuse me, but find the balance of giving it your absolute focus, your intention, but not in an overwhelming, fearful way. Okay, don't overwhelm yourself with too many thoughts about it. But most definitely, before you sleep, gently, Say to yourself, if I have that nightmare tonight, I'm going to face it. I'm going to stand up to it. I'm going to say no. Be firm. And then what will happen at the most perfect time is you will have that nightmare. And because you've adjusted your mind and your choice, in the daytime, through your intention that you absolutely mean, you have to mean it. What it will mean is when you have that nightmare, when you have that dream, when it's literally happening at night, your consciousness will be aware of the dream and you'll be aware you are to stand up to it. And so in the dream you'll have the awareness of that you'll be watching your dream and you can say no to it in whatever shape or form that is good for you you can say no stop go away whatever is your nightmare whatever way is best for you stand up to it and you will in the dream itself. So in other words, what we're doing is we're planting thought forms in the daytime or just before we go to bed. We're planting conscious, very aware thought forms that when we get that nightmare, 
in it, we're going to stand up to it. Which means when you have the nightmare, you'll be completely aware that you should be standing up to it. And you'll have the strength to do so. And you'll say, no, go away, stop. I'm not having this enough. And you'll do so without the fear. And that nightmare will stop because you've addressed the fear. Now, sometimes you could then have one more nightmare. Okay, so you might get one more to stand up to, or you might get two more to stand up to, sometimes. Well, this is you taking back the control, you see. It's you learning to say no to your own fears. And when you face them, they go away. They don't exist anymore when we face our own fears. And that's what you will have done. But you'll have done it with conscious intention. Now I say this to anyone who doesn't know me. Um, just to explain that I only speak through experience. I don't learn this stuff. I just speak through experience. And I had a recurring nightmare for 25 years. And uh, I did this. I did it intuitively. I knew to do it intuitively. I set my intention. I had the nightmare. Uh, I knew in the nightmare I was to stand up to it, but I got really confused. And so it didn't work the first time. But I had the awareness in the nightmare that I was to stand up to it but I just got confused in it. And so then I waited for the next one to come and I stood up to it. And I haven't had that nightmare for eight years now. And it was the type of nightmare that I would wake up from and it would literally, the screaming within me, the screeching would literally burst the blood vessels in my throat and I could see all the different blood vessels burst because of the amount of screaming and the loudness um, and the strength of the scream that I would go through each time I had the nightmare. And uh, to just stand up to it and say no. You have to see your fear. You have to address your fear. And then it will dissolve. And that nightmare, that recurring nightmare will go. And that's what happened for me. It's not come back in eight years. And, and I would have this every month, at least once a month, at least. Okay. So I hope that helps. Try it out. It's worth trying. Uh, anything is worth trying. Just keep an open mind. Try something new. If it doesn't work, you've got nothing to lose. Have you? But give it a go if those repeat nightmares are affecting you, and they will, and they affect your life and your well being. Okay, it's the end of this one, and I'm going to come on again very shortly. I'll take a five minute break, and then I'm going to come on again to um, talk about and explain how you can find peace in any moment. So another little exercise to do that we'll do together. And we'll do that one together as well. Okay, so five minute break and then I'll be back on. And this will go on to YouTube later on today. If it helps, please, please show it to another person. Let's try and help people sleep at night. Yeah, we're in this together. And uh, so many people all over this planet struggling to sleep. And then they struggle in the daytime. So if you think it will help someone, just show them YouTube or here. Okay, God bless everybody. Thank you. Bye for now.